Hi guys, well continuing on our Z490 quest, next up we turn to Gigabyte to see what they have to offer in the Z490 Aorus Pro AX. This board here can be regarded as a mid-range option and it's really a follow-on from the Z390 Aorus Pro. Pro AX boasts a monochrome theme and has a completely redesigned digital phase power design ready for 10th gen. It has a new heatsink design as well. Gigabyte are also one of the few brands who have designed this board to have PCI Express 4 hardware design, perhaps alluding to a future CPU release supporting this technology. So this board is going to have an MSRP of around 269 in the US, 295 in the UK and then 500 in Australia. This board is you know, quite a bit more expensive than last season's Aorus Pro. We seem to be seeing most of the mid-range boards shifting up and being a little bit more expensive than last generation. So we'll crack on with an unboxing on this board, show you what's inside the box and then check out all of those features. Before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by Corsair and the K95 RGB Platinum XT. This mechanical keyboard is the brand's current flagship and it boasts perky RGB backlighting, a 19 zone light edge across the top of the board, as well as dedicated media keys with volume roller. There are also dedicated macro keys on the left side and this XT has full support for the Elgato Stream Deck. So this is undoubtedly one of Corsair's most feature rich keyboards to date. For more info on the XT, check out that link in the description. Here is the packaging that Pro AX arrives in. Over on the back we have the features which Gigabyte are really trying to push. We've got the phase design, the thermal design and of course PCI Express 4.0 hardware design. We'll go into those features when we look at the board. And inside the box we have the board in the anti-static bag. We have a user manual, installation guide, the driver CD and a case badge. And along with that, we get a handful of accessories. We get the 802.11ax antennas, G Connect for your power cables for your case, four SATA cables, some thermal probe cables there, and the RGB cable. Okay, so here is Pro AX. This board here follows in the footsteps of the Z390 Aorus Pro. I think it makes a good attempt at improving on that previous design. In terms of the styling, we get a matte black PCB with gray and black used throughout. By using that neutral theme and keeping things simple, this design will appeal to most tech enthusiasts. But as I've mentioned before, there are so many boards which adopt a very similar approach by opting for this color scheme. Now we do get some integrated RGB lighting on this board, but it is extremely minimal with the back cover and the audio getting some illumination. And that lighting can be customized in the RGB Fusion software. In terms of the size, Pro AX fits into the ATX form factor. So they'll have no problems fitting it into most cases. So we'll begin at the CPU socket, which of course is LGA1200. So that is a new socket designed for 10th gen CPUs. Now while this is a new socket, Intel has designed the coolers to use 1151. And so what that means is if you've got a cooler which is designed for the previous gen 1151, then that will fit. Just be sure to double check with the cooling manufacturer if it is up to the job of handling Comet Lake CPUs. It should tell you on the web website. Now in terms of the power delivery we have a 12 phase design that is digital and it uses DRMOS. As well as that we get tantalum caps, premium chokes and black caps, a 6 layer PCB and 2 times copper PCB. And covering the VRM we have two heat sinks which are joined with a direct touch heat pipe. This thermal design has been redesigned for Z490 with what a gigabyte term fins array 2 and the improved thermal pads. In our web review we're going to be comparing this design to other Z490s just to see how well it performs. Behind the top heatsink we have the CPU power which is an 8 plus 4 pin socket something we're seeing more and more of on Z490 boards and just like other brands Gigabyte are using solid pin power connectors just stronger and have the potential to carry heavier loads for this platform. Now in terms of headers there are 8 hybrid fan headers Two of those are for the CPU fan, two are for pumps, and the rest are for system fans. On top of that, we also have nine temperature sensors which you can pull thermal stats from. And for additional RGB, we have four headers at the top and the bottom of the board. Two of those are addressable. Moving on to the memory, there are four slots here with support for dual channel DDR4, up to 128 gig and up to 5,000 megahertz. And so far that has been the highest frequency on a board that we've come across. Those slots also benefit from Gigabyte's ultra durable memory armor to bring in a bit of longevity for the board. And right next to the DDR4 section, we've got a USB 3 header and a USB 3.2 header. And that 3.2 is Gen 1 and it's not Gen 2, unfortunately. But that does mean that you get some compatibility there for new and older cases. 
Moving on to the storage, we have six SATA 36G ports for SATA based devices. And then we have three M.2 slots, which utilize PCI Express Gen 3X4. Now Gigabyte are one brand which have stated that the PCI Express is capable of Gen 4, hinting that maybe future Intel generations for this socket will bring in PCI Express 4 capabilities. And so two of those M.2s have heat sinks, while the top one is uncovered. And those heat sinks attach to that large one which covers the Z490 chip. If we take a look at the expansion area, we have three PCI Express 3.0 X16s and two PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for the X16s are 16, 8 and 4. The top slot is the full 16 lanes from the CPU. So if you're going to be using a single GPU, then we recommend going for that one. And then if you're going to be using more than one card, the mode will drop to either 4 or 8, depending on which slot you use. Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire are both supported. You can also see that the two upper slots benefit from more ultra durable treatment with the metal reinforcement and the extra anchor points. One feature which is going to be extremely handy is towards the bottom of the board and it's called Q Flash Plus. So with this we don't need to have the CPU, the memory or other components installed to update the BIOS. Just download it to a USB drive, rename the file to gigabyte.bin and plug it into a Q Flash port, hit the button and it's going to update that BIOS for you. Immediately next to the PCI Express, we have the audio solution, which is based around the Realtek ALC1220 codec. And as part of that audio package, we get a handful of extra features, extra components, such as high-end audio caps, audio file grade Wemer caps, separated channels, and isolated circuitry. Okay, and last of all, we come to the rear panel, which consists of the following features. We have four USB 2 ports, antenna connectors for the Wi-Fi 6, a HDMI port, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, those are in red. You get two Type-A and one Type-C. You also get three USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, those are in blue. 2.5 gigabit LAN comes as standard, and then we get the eight channel audio jacks with the optical out. So we get a good blend of connectivity there, plenty of ports to use, and newer tech such as Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 gig ethernet, that is always welcomed. However, it is quite bizarre to see Gigabyte using up space to include four USB 2 ports, as we're now starting to see manufacturers phase the standard out. All right, well that is the Z490 Aorus Pro AX. This board offers a good blend of features for this new Intel platform. Some of the things that I think really stand out is the support there for the 5000 megahertz DDR4. We've got Q-Flash at the bottom of the board. You don't even need those core components in order to update the BIOS. And then there is the fact that Gigabyte has designed this board here to have hardware support for PCI Express 4 when it comes along. The inclusion of PCI Express 4 hardware support gives us a bit of a clue that while 10th gen doesn't allow for such technology, a future CPU release for this platform under socket 1200 could indeed support it. And you can view that in a good or a bad way. Good because this board is ready for it, and bad that moving to this platform right now is settling for second best when you look at what AMD has to offer. Now for the most part this board is great, but there are a few things which I think could have been done differently. The 3.2 header, for the front panel is Gen 1, it's not Gen 2, like a handful of boards that we've already checked out. And then on the back panel, we've got a series of four ports. There's a USB 2, and we could have had uh, 3.2 there quite easily. It is a wasted space. But then on the other hand, we've got a handful of features on this board, the eight hybrid fan headers. We've got uh, nine temperature sensors, ultra durable feature set, and of course that solid audio package. But what do you guys think of this Aorus Pro AX here? Let me know by casting your vote in the top right corner and of course, let me know what you think of it in the comment section below as well. Uh, once the CPU embargo has lifted, we will of course have a web review for this board. It's gonna showcase all the performance against other Z490s and show the overclocking potential for Aorus Pro AX. We'll drop that link very soon. So thanks for your continued support guys. Stay tuned for more content just like this. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.